Greetings to all our viewers and thank you for joining us for yet another MNS Creativist production. For today's presentation, we are going to be sharing with you a pre-recorded interview with Mr. Kotlisa, a senior educator from the Midlands province in Zimbabwe. He shares his insights into his personal life, his work experiences, the challenges that he faced, the law and the high moments. Enjoy. I'm David Kosisa, uh, born September 25, 1935, and uh, got educated beginning at Gunde Primary School in 1948, and went up to, uh, that was standard at that time, we didn't have any grades. I went up to standard one, and then from there, because we had moved to a certain area which was near Suundula, Suundula Primary School now, I did my standard two up to standard four, and then moved there because we are now staying in lower area around Sikombingo. I uh, did my standard five at Vungu Primary School. That was the only primary school beside Loa Guelo with standard five at that time. Then uh, 1956, that was 1956. And uh, 1957, I failed to get room for standard six. The following year, 1958, I went to Bulawayo, where I stayed in Popoma, and uh, did my standard six at uh, Kulumane Government School near Popoma High School. The following year, 1959, I did my Form 1 at uh, Popoma, which was then Bulawayo African High School. And I was there for two years. That's up to 1960. And from there I went to, in fact, I failed to get room for teacher training because I didn't have money. My father was late. So instead I went to do temporal teaching, starting at Vungu, where I taught for for a year, and then from there, I went to several other schools, including uh, Sikombingo, Gunde, uh, Ozoli, and uh, Mondoro, which is called Mandora Primary School. From there, I went for teacher training in 1969. I went to train at Loa Velo Prime, I mean, a mission, where I was doing T3 for three years, up to 1971. Then uh, after training, I was asked to remain at Loa Velo. So I started teaching there, 1972 right up to my retiring time, uh, 2004. Uh, I taught under two headmasters, Mr. Mazunda and Mr. Nube. And in 1991, I got promoted to the position of deputy head. I left Loa Guelo and went to uh, Myamana Primary School where I was acting head because there was no head there. Then after a few months I left that school and went to another school in the farms. From there I went back to Loa Guero after my former headmaster Mr. Zetimuvi had left for Matebel and so I went there as head uh, up to the time when I retired, that was 2004. I 
I liked my teaching, I liked my job, especially when I was uh, being supervised by my former headmaster, Mr. Mazunda. Uh, I liked my teaching and also Mr. Nguve was one of the teachers. After that, we, after that I became his deputy, although not a substantive. So uh, when Mr. Nguve left, I took as head, as head, and uh, I, I, I liked my work. I liked my work. I learned a lot of things from the surrounding people, from my former headmasters, and also from the church supervisors and so on. And I, I think I benefited a lot. And as a result, I had to uh, seek for a place for my home and so that's where I'm staying because I liked the community of Loa Quello. I remember children like uh, Mr. T. Duve, Temba Duve, one of those, Spiwe Duve, and uh, many others that are now adults. I, I enjoyed working with them and even now I, enjoyed, I enjoy communicating with them because uh, they are locals. And there are also many that are not local who have uh, gone to many places. Some of them are holding government offices and uh, one of the, those I taught, although I taught him before I, um, I became uh, a, a, a trained teacher, that was the, 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 former, the former MP who is now late. He is the man who helped put the, the third road here. Maboza, I also taught him uh, Tikunde. In fact, I, I, I became a, a leader of the headmasters in Chundura, uh, in Gweru, and Lower Gweru, as well as Somapula. I was the leader of the headmasters, and we, we, we did a lot of good work for the four areas. I, I used to tell teachers, please, you have to work with the parents, you have to work with the children, and please, as, if there are any problems with the children, consult the parents. Do not deal with the children harshly, but consult with the children and be advised by the parents of the children on how you should deal with the children. Yes, I would, I would advise those teachers, please, to study the old and mix it with the new. Where whatever you think is right, please do not just do that on its own. Consult from those who have gone before you and see if the two can work together in order to produce the better. I could say my faith has assisted me in that. I, I benefit from my faith as a teacher because life itself needs uh, teachers and not all teachers are good for life, that is for Christian life. So if I believe in Jesus Christ, I know I'm going to be a different teacher from any other teacher because those who don't believe in Christ, 
may not be faithful in their dealings with their jobs. Yes, I do have. She's Winfred McQuilly. Uh, I met uh, in 1956 when we were together as students at uh, Fungu Council School. Her father was headmaster of that school in that year. So we got uh, to love each other and we stayed together until 1964 when we got married. We got married right here at Luau Velo Church and we were married by the late S.B. Dube. He was the leader of the mission field in Gweru at that time. And we have four children, one boy and three girls. Peace is the first, followed by confidence, followed by rejoice, and uh, the last one is providence. Yes, we have grandchildren, Peace is a girl and a boy. Confidence is also a girl and a boy. Rejoice, a girl and a boy. And uh, Providence is a girl. Uh, first of all, I would like to advise those who want to get married that they should not rush into marriage. That's the problem with children of today. They love each other today and the next week they are, they are married. Such kinds of marriage easily break, you know. It has to be something that stays for a few years. For instance, we got married after I think it was after 10 years. It helped us to stay together. And we, you also will have known each other, characters and so on. And uh, what I would advise those who get married today, it shouldn't be simple for people to just divorce, especially if you have had children. Uh, if you divorce, whose children are those going to be? Because if the father says, well, they go with the mother, definitely those children will have no father because the stepfather is not their best father. So it's better to, to stay together. Problems are there in life. You cannot get any marriage that is no problem. Problems are there and we have to try and solve them. There's not even one marriage that is no problem. We stay with the problems in life. As long as the devil is there, problems will be there. And so you cannot say, I want my marriage to be problem free. No, we cannot do that. One of the problems that I've discovered, especially if you are dealing with the people in these rural areas, you'll find there are people who might not be well successful and you have to try and compromise to help them. If they don't have money for fees, you go out of your way to try and help them 
on how to get money. There may be some jobs at the school. Those who are really poor, you can help them in any way you can so that they don't, uh, they don't have their children lose their school. This idea of driving away children and saying, go get money, and then you forget about them. Call the parents. If the parents come, try and see how those parents can get money for their education, for the children and so on. Try to help them in other ways on how to have their children education. Our aim should be to have these local children educated. We can't have all parents being successful parents. Some parents have bright children and yet they don't have money. So we as headmasters and teachers must help them so that their children can also be educated and from there they are successful people. Yeah, in fact, on that same point of fees, uh, these days we have quite a lot of uh, our young people who are outside Zimbabwe, who are in other countries and they seem successful. I would have uh, organized maybe a few of those young people to sort of create a fund where such poor children could be helped and uh, also help the parents who are not very successful. The one experience maybe out of many that I am still thinking of is the experience where we used to organize a few of the children who did not manage to maybe get educated and those we were helping to study during the holiday. You know, today people, uh, people get uh, money for, being, uh, for helping children during the holiday. We, we used to get some children for nothing. We helped them for nothing during the holiday, those who were not that good so that they also became good. We would teach them during the holiday and by the time we opened the school, they would be a bit better. So I think we, we helped quite, a, um, we helped those quite a lot and they benefited. I want to thank you so much for coming to interview me. Uh, may God bless you. We are really happy that we can have our former students, our former pupils coming to interview us, to hear our own thinking about life itself. And I would, uh, have, I would uh, ask more of you to do the same. Please, I want God to help you, help your family, and help uh, your comrades wherever you are working. May the Lord bless you and bless us so that when we are gone, these uh, recordings may remain evidence that we have lived for some time here. Thank you. That was Mr. Kotlisa sharing with us from his wealth of experience. As MNS creativists, we are grateful for the time he took to share with us. And as for you, our viewers would like to say a double thank you and hope to see you again next time for our second installment. 
And on that note, we say goodbye and stay blessed.